Sabriel Matthias versus Shohajan Ergashev. 12 rounds in the 140-pound division. Ergashev has the opportunity to win a title if he can dethrone the heavy-handed, big-punching Matthias. Let's get into it. Let's start with the champion, Matthias. 19 wins, one loss, 19 wins by way of knockout. Matthias is a bad boy, man. I mean, he's one of my favorites in the sport today. He's a heavy puncher, big shots. I mean, great conditioning, ripping combinations, and he's consistent pressuring in his approach he's got a great chin about him too man he throws a whole bunch of punches and he doesn't need a whole lot of space to really get busy he's a very good inside fighter and knows how to throw combinations from in close without smothering his work he's got good timing and he does a few unconventional things in the ring that he's able to get away with Right? He has that jumping jab that is kind of strange to see, but it's effective and often connects when he does use it. Right, But the pressure of Matthias is that strong suit, man, that relentless come forward style. But what works with him can also work against him right he doesn't mind taking a shot to throw a shot you've seen the fights man he will walk through your shot because he believes he's a bigger puncher than you and he believes he can punish you if his shots lands first so he'll give himself up because he believes he can land a better shot and sometimes it looks a little careless and makes you say, man, what are you doing, bro? Just, just take a step back. Like, you don't have to go full force. You can be a little bit more strategic in how you're approaching. When he fought Batir uh, Jukumbayev, who's won 14 of his 18 fights by way of knockout, landed big on him, man, in that fight. One of those shots wobbled him in the seventh round, spun Matthias around, and Matthias just came forward and kept throwing shots of his own and got clipped again. But then in the next round, Jukim Baev's corner stopped the fight. As Matthias gets more confident in the fight, his hands start to drop more and more. And when it makes him, it, it, it makes him more susceptible to getting hit, but it is also gives him more time to sit down on his punches and his punches actually generate more power and power and the volume starts to pick up. But Jukim Baev, Man, for a few rounds there, he was landing cleanly with that left hand, that uppercut, the straight hand, consistently landing with the same similar shot. When he fought Petros Anayan the first time, right back in 2020, it was a very close fight. That was actually a very exciting back and forth fight, right? Anayan has a lot of heart, man. And that night, like he was on one, right? I thought he was going to go down a couple times in that fight because he was taking some punishing shots and it looked like it was hurting, right? Matthias was as well, taking some big shots as well, some big punches, but both men were landing eye-catching shots. And Nanyan was right there every single time, man. And he was consistently throwing those same big shots as Matthias was punching as well too but Matthias was hurt in that seventh round fell back on the ropes and the ref called it a knockdown and that was probably the deciding factor in that fight for the judges and Matthias suffered his first loss but man were those cats throwing a whole bunch of shots a whole lot of volume in the rematch the volume did not change and the shots did not change the eye-catching shots did not change both men were throwing punches as if it was personal. The 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 thud in Matthias' shot sometimes, man, it's just ridiculous, right? I didn't like how much he was on the rope in that fight, though. He chose to stay there and could have really evaded some of those shots if he wanted to, but he chose to stay there. And he was fighting off of the ropes, man. He was still throwing heavy punches, rights, hooks, body shots, ducking and weaving a little bit, and still throwing even though he was on the back foot, leaning on the ropes. Matthias, man always always is going to keep throwing and throwing and throwing and eventually matthias got the better of ananyan and dropped him and it was over with matthias is not a guy whose mentality is just to beat you his mentality is i'm going to 
break you down second by second, minute by minute, round by round. In his most recent fight, he fought Jeremiah Ponce earlier this year, who has never been stopped before, never lost before, and Ponce came out firing, man. He was putting Matthias, he was hitting Matthias with, with uppercuts and body shots and the heavy pressure, the storm was storming <laughs> in the first round. Matthias was getting backed up. But then after that, things started to turn round by round and Matthias started to really let that power in his hands go. But in that fifth round, man, he put some hooks on Ponce and some body shots on Ponce that didn't just look painful, but looked punishing as well. And he would go on to win the fight and he win the fight by technical stoppage. Man, you are going to have your moments against Sabril Matthias. But can you capitalize in those moments and make them count? We'll see if Ergashev can do just that. Let's talk about Ergashev. 23 wins, no losses. 20 wins by way of knockout. The southpaw in Ergashev is also a guy who can punch, right? He's got the height advantage. He's got the reach advantage coming into this one. I remember when he fought Mikel Fox, and as soon as that bell rang, he came out swinging heavy, letting hands fly from everywhere, right? He was missing a whole bunch of those shots, he was headhunting, trying to make a statement, trying to close out the show as quickly as the fight started. The pressure was relentless, man, but I got to credit Mikel Fox for that because he stayed composed, moved his head off the line, didn't panic, and got to boxing and countering using his jab to create space and his feet to move and evade the aggressive Ergashev. I thought Fox fought a very good fight that night. I liked his poise. Ergashev was trying to force the fight, and because he was trying to force the fight, he didn't set up the fight in a way where his skill set could really show, and we could see what he could do. But nonetheless, he did end up getting the win in that fight. He did land some nice body shots and the pressuring. It made it seem like he was the one dictating the pace. But personally, I didn't think that was one of his better fights, even though it was a better name on his resume. But the stats in that fight, after that fight, man, was very interesting. Very interesting to say the least. But to that point, now he had beaten two undefeated fighters. Mikhail Fox and Sadi Fredrickson, who he beat and stopped him when they fought. Ergashev is an explosive guy, right? He's got pretty good footwork and he can box. But you can see the shots that he's trying to set up. He's got that Western European style that stands where it's that pendulum swing, that jump forward, jump back, that jump forward and try and follow through with the hand that is behind him, man. He's a very good body puncher as well and a guy that has improved over his fights when he fought fox man i thought after that he became a little bit more strategic in his approach a little bit more patient and focused more on the placement of his punches focused more on not necessarily a whole lot of volume per se but more the shots that he is throwing sometimes less is more although in this fight i think he's going to have to switch that a little bit and try to find a balance between the two because matthias may's volume more is always more it's the mindset of sabriel matthias but i think he's going to have some great opportunities to land that left hand that Jukumbayev was able to hurt and have success against Matthias with the left hand, the, the overhand shot, the looping shot, the body shot. He's going to have those moments and those times to let his favorite shot and his best shots go. Ergashev is springy, athletic, and when he's comfortable on that front foot, man, ugh, he's, he's tough to deal with. He's tough to beat. In his last fight, he fought Angel Hernandez, and he was on the front foot early in that fight, swinging in and out of range, letting shots off when he wanted to. Hernandez was dropped in the first round from a short uppercut that he kind of walked into when he was trying to go on the offense. Hernandez did not back down though, man. He's a tough cat. You know, he tried to hold his own, right? He landed a nice right hand on Ergashev. Ergashev took it and kept coming forward. Ergashev, uh, the footwork and the quickness, the, the skill set was just too much for Hernandez that fight. And Hergashev just was comfortable all fight. He took his time. He didn't throw a whole lot of punches, but the shots that he did pick to throw, 
Hernandez felt it and he was hurt by those shots, got dropped in the fifth round before closing out the show in the same round. So this is going to be a very interesting fight and I'm interested to see what the strategy and the tactics is for both men. You know, we can say it's going to go one way and then of course it goes another way. We saw what happened to Santalan versus Rocha. It totally two different things. And this could be a same similar thing. So who wins? Matthias is going to be there to get hit. He gets hit a lot, even when he doesn't need to get hit. Like you could evade some of those shots. He takes it on the chin anyway. Ergashev can have some of that same similar success that Jukumbayev had with that left hand encountering in the body shots, right? Which is one of his best shots. But the other thing is I haven't seen Ergashev's inside game, that inside skill set. We know we can fight off the front foot, but how is how good is he when he is fighting off the back foot and consistently being pressured under heavy amounts of stress and strain and shots coming back at him? How is he going to handle that? Matthias' stamina is ridiculous. Ridiculous. The volume is crazy. How will Ergashev keep up with the volume? Will he be able to throw just as much as Matthias, as effectively as Matthias? And if Matthias doesn't respect his power, man, it could be a long day for Ergashev because that pressure is not going to stop. It could also be a long night for Matthias if he can't cut off the ring and he keeps his hand down and lets Ergashev get comfortable. Ergashev is going to pendulum his way into landing big punishing shots and seizing the momentum of the fight. I'm not expecting this fight to go the distance, man. I think someone is going to get stopped. I'm going with Sabriel Matthias to win this fight by way of knockout, some type of technical stoppage. Ergashev, to me, man, hasn't fought someone like Matthias before. Whereas Matthias has been tested a few times and has responded well. Maybe Ergashev will show what he can do and he can do just that. I believe he has the skill set to make it a tough night for Sabriel Matthias and even get the win, right? It's boxing. Anything can happen, but I'm going to go with what I've seen more from Matthias. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you would like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you would like support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. If you're enjoying the content, enjoying the video, getting something from it, then I hope that you consider becoming a member. We got two different tiers. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel and is greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Man, I appreciate each of you. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this long, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, and we'll definitely see you next time.